and my ID for National Assembly. Then they started attending to Felix Orinda. Later on, I sent. Yes. <coughs> Do you believe that if you had not given them that assurance and undertaking, would they have treated this particular patient? For sure, Felix would have died. Yes. But the, but the payment was made, the payment was also made the same day. I sent my, my, my wife to, because they had my ATM already, and uh, they called, because I took the number of the person in charge and took mine, so they called me. And when they called me, I was already at Kilimani Police Station, sent my wife, and made the payment. But the money was still yours? Yes. From my Will any, was there any other person who was willing to, to make this payment apart from you? No. 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 And the purpose of making this payment was to ensure that Felix gets the proper attention needed. Yes. <coughs> So at that particular time, after like uh, one hour, between, uh, within one hour, police officers from uh, Kilimani, the DCI section, came to the hospital. instructed us to accompany them to the police station together with uh, the drivers of the van and everyone who was inside the van. We went to Kilimani at, police at station. At point that they instructed you, did they tell you anything? Did they tell you uh, whether you are under arrest, whether it's just... What, what, what did, did they tell you? They told me to accompany them. Just to accompany them? Yes. Okay. So how did you get to uh, the police station? How did you accompany them? In which vehicle? I got in their vehicle. Yes. And then uh, we went to the police station. Then at the police station, I was told that I was uh, under arrest. That was on uh, the same Friday. That I will be arraigned on Monday in court. You, you are being arraigned for what, what they say? I will be arraigned in court. Actually, the word that the officer used initially was for killing Felix Orinda. Then on Monday, On Monday, I was arraigned before your brother, Honorable Andai, Honorable Andai, who later on instructed me, gave orders that I should proceed with the payment of the hospital bills. that I should proceed 
with the payment of the hospital bills and taking care of Felix. And that ruling was set aside. That, that ruling before we go to the thing set aside. It's the, it's the ruling, we have a ruling dated the 27th day of January 2020. Confirm that that is. Okay. Yes. The ruling was set aside by your brother, Justice Luka Kimaru, at the High Court, who said that I should not... I, con I, 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 sorry, I want to take you a bit slowly, because uh, when this order was given, I want you to be very particular, and I'll, uh, I'll guide you. <coughs> you are told to deposit a certain amount of money. Yes, I, I was told to deposit uh, in the ruling around, uh, I think, 10 million in installments of 2.5 million. But you do confirm that we, this ruling has been provided to court, this particular court? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, I paid a value. I, uh, you are to meet the medical expenses, and this sum is equivalent to the to the value of cash bail. This court sets for the accused person. This sum will be deposited in court in four equal installments of 2.5 million each for the next four months. This ruling was set aside by your brother. Would you wish to, to rely on this ruling in your evidence? Yes. Would you wish to mark the ruling dated the 27th day of January 2020 as DMA 54? Yes, just continue. Did yeah. you pay? Did you make payments? Did you? Pay? Yeah, yeah. I made the payments. Pass one to this. Pass one to the ruling. Okay. And uh, the ruling was uh, was appealed by the office, the DPP, office of the DPP, the prosecution. That is, uh, you can uh, inform the court the particulars of the. It was a criminal revision number 16 of 2020. 16 of 2020. And the ruling was... If you didn't pay what would have happened to the victim? He would have died. He would have died. That is the time that Felix was in the hospital at in ICU. After being removed, he was on and off again, doing other several surgeries. And the bill continued accumulating at Nairobi Hospital to 23 million. Then, having noted that Felix was immobile and could not move, I decided to buy him a house at Kilimani, an apartment. with a value of around 17 million. Hired two nurses for Felix, two physiotherapists, One occupational therapist. Yeah, 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 a bit slow. 
We are not used to the no. medical world. Occupational? Occupational therapists. Yeah. One, then two physiotherapists and two nurses, which up to date I'm paying a total of 300,000 per month. You do that for 37 months so far from the time. Just of close. So you are paying 300 per month. Per month. Just that aspect of physiotherapy. Physio, two nurses, yes. two physiotherapists, one occupational therapist, a total of 300,000 per month. And I've done this for 37 months so far up to date. Which brings a total of 11.1 million. Is 0.1 million. And, and, and that is still going on? Or it's still going on. Does it still need that? Still going on. Yes. His upkeep, which is 70,000 per month that I send him, that he uses to pay his bills and purchase of food. Together with medicine and other consumables, which is 80,000 per month. So the two, 70 plus 80,000, is 150,000, which I've paid up to date for 37 months totaling to 5.5 million. That then, particular need, uh, is it still, does it, is it still going to be, uh, is it continuous? It is continuous. It is still something that he needs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something he needs and uh, I may stop it once he is in a better condition and is back on his feet. Then there's the last surgery that we did, Your Honor, that costed two million that made him now to speak as we are talking. Felix is speaking the way we are speaking. Surgery was done at Nairobi Hospital. And the total amount of money That I've used so far is 58.6 million, Your Honor. I still have other dreams. 58.6 million. I believe I that is the exclusive of even this month. That is for the 37 months. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, I'm still planning to buy him a motor vehicle for his mobility, to set up at DJ's academy for him, so that at least now that I left the life of the club, he can also successfully live the life of a club and earn a decent living. Further to that, Your Honor, I'm planning to take him to India for further treatment. That's all I can state. So, uh, in terms of what you have told the court, there is an, uh, a, a document that uh, you have. What is that document? The document is Agreement for Sale, Eva for Garden Company Limited. To Felix Odiambo Orinda. It is dated uh, 
It is dated the fourth day of January 2021. And it's for the purchase for of the what? purchase of an apartment number C ten zero four or a thousand and four. This apartment is the one you told the court costed how much? Seventeen million. Seventeen million. Value. Yes, I'll guide you. So, uh, this particular apartment, uh, have you paid for it already? Yeah, I paid for it, Your you Honor. Paid for it. Yes. Does he live in that apartment? As we speak, he lives there, Your Honor. He lives in that apartment. Has he been handed over the title of that particular property? Yes. There is uh, a bundle of documents that I am holding. Yes. Let me identify those documents. Yes. What are those documents? These are some of the receipts of the hospital bills and the home care yes. bills. So there are receipts for which places? These are receipts for Pinnacle Home Health Services. That is where we got the nurses, physiotherapists, and the occupational therapist. Pinnacle, Pinnacle Home Health. Health Services. Yes. There's a uh, for. Professor, <coughs> Professor Atinga. Yeah, uh, if I can just mention them, there's Pinnacle Home Health Services, there's Professor Atinga, Dr. Owinga, there's Amiken Limited, there's the Nairobi Hospital. So for the Nairobi Hospital, of, uh, we've not got the up to date. So those receipts uh, are in support of the payments you've been making? Yes, Your Honor. Would you wish to rely upon these receipts as your evidence? Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, Your Honor, I, we request to mark these receipts as a bundle because they are quite many. So we want to, to mark them as the MFI 8. A document that uh, I will also show you. You can tell the court the nature of this document. Your Honor, this is a deed of agreement. Dated 24th day of February 2021. Between Paul Ongili Babu Owino Felix Odiambo Rinda Coma Johannes Orongo Orinda Coma Mary Adiambo Hongo
agreement on commitment and assistance. So this, uh, these people you've mentioned, uh, the, the first one we know, who's the second and the third? Second person is the father to Felix Orinda, and the third is the mother, who is now deceased. The mother to Felix Orinda. Yeah, the mother to Felix Orinda. How did this uh, agreement come to be? This agreement came as a result of the DPP giving the condition for withdrawal of the first charge and they instructed the lawyers to draft this agreement. So whatever is contained in this agreement, was this the first time that this commitment was being made to Felix? There was a commitment that I've made before. You, you had already made this decision? Yes. So. It is a decision that I'd already made because I'd already started uh, payment of the medical bills. And whatever is contained here, which are several things which you have said, were you forced by the DPP to have these conditions here? I wasn't forced. You are not forced? No. So you voluntarily decided to... I did that voluntarily because I had made up my mind that I was going to take care of Felix as my friend. This deed was signed by everyone, including the parents of Felix? Yes, the deed was signed by myself. Uh, parents of Felix, that's the father and the mother. There's the advocates, Duncan Okach and Kenneth Mumbo. It was witnessed. It was witnessed. It was witnessed by those advocates. Yes. Would you wish to rely upon that? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, we would wish to mark it as the MFI 9. The deed dated the 26th of February 2021. So I will uh, now take you to very briefly on the subject of this particular charge that faces you that was abused before this court. There was a firearm that we have referred to. You confirm that was a firearm? Uh, that is exactly what I'm talking Yes, Your Honor. That's exactly what I'm talking about. was a bullet recovered from the scene. There is a bullet. You heard about a bullet which yes. the ballistics officer was, was testifying. Yes, there was they a... They said they recovered a bullet from the wall. Yes, Your Honor. There was an allegation that that bullet emanated from here, from that pistol. That was the allegation that had been. That was the allegation, but. That was the allegation. Thank you so much. <coughs> A 
and you have told the court that your your gun was not working. My gun jumped. Your gun had jumped. Had jumped. Was yes. there a possibility that it could have fired? There was no possibility because when I was trying to fire yes, the yes, sixth. Yes, yes. I want it to go on record. I want your answer to go on record. There was no possibility? There was no possibility because when I tried to fire the sixth round at the range, it, it, did didn't, it did not fire. But I came to realize later, during the testimony of the ballistic expert, is, uh, and the IO, uh, yeah, when he said that uh, he could not ascertain whether that bullet came from my gun, and he, he is the expert, that, that, bullet, expert in court. that that bullet did not come from my gun. Could not ascertain. Yes. Is there any other person who has come and ascertained that either that bullet or any other bullet found there came from your gun? There is none. None also. And the IO, what now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and the IO? The IO testified, Your Honor, and said that. Uh, they recovered a cartridge from inside the gun. Now that is what now made me realize that the, that the, that when I went to the range, that is why my gun jumped because there was a cartridge stuck inside the gun that could not enable that gun to function. A cartridge. That was stuck inside the gun. That was their own evidence. Yes. You don't know that is evidence that is by PW10, Dr. Dennis Mikesi. And in the ballistic report, do you also uh, remember that this issue was also in the report of the cartridge stuck in the, in the gun? It was. It was in the report. Yes. Your Honor, that report is uh, the one that was produced as exhibit number one by PWH. So the evidence that was given according to that this gun could not shoot because it had a fault and even the bullet that was found there could not they could not decisively say whether it came from your gun. Yeah, actually the expert said that uh, that bullet could come from several uh, firearms that he mentioned. And these are the experts speaking? Yes. Not myself or Ongoya legal experts. Yeah. <laughs> Ballistic expert. So when you to the extent of uh, that particular scene, there was a CCTV uh, video that was actually uh, produced, a CCTV footage. Your Honor, I'm referring to exhibit number 13. Yes. It was played in court? Yes. What do you have to say? A firearm. It and again... Identify the firearm when that CCTV footage is played. Yes. Thank you. And again... There, and there are witnesses who testified in court. Did any witness testify in terms of any parole, any promotion? There is none, Your Honor. Was there any evidence brought in terms of picture form of any broken glasses? There is none. Any broken chair? No evidence.
you have uh, when you are placed under arrest. Yes. You are subjected. The, you are subjected to a toxicology uh, examination. Were you? Yes, Your Honour. Just tell the court about it. At the police station on a Friday, when I was taken there, the toxicology test, or rather the swab, was taken the following day, which was on a Saturday, and we went to take the DNA samples. My DNA samples were taken at, uh, there's a report here, the hospital. The government chemist, on a Saturday, my swabs were taken. And they informed me that they wanted to confirm the level of alcohol, whether I was intoxicated on that particular day or not. Of which the report... So, so you actually subjected yourself. Did you cooperate or did you resist? I cooperated. Operated. They went through the process, took the swabs. Took all the swabs they wanted? Yes. The Directorate of Criminal Investigation. The date is on the 18th day of January 2020. The reference is Order for DNA Sampling Procedure under Section 122A. You wish to mark this particular letter as DMFI Bulletin. Yes. Yes. You wish to rely upon that document? Yes, Your Honor. Now, further to that, you have uh, there is a document which, Your Honor, we had already marked as the MFI-1, as uh, provided to us by the prosecution. There is a, a let that letter is, uh, the title confirmed is from the Office of the President. Yes, Office of the President, Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, Government Chemist Department. Yes, uh, it's, what is the heading of the document? The heading is Serology Stroke DNA Sample Receipt Form. DNA Sample Receipt Form. Does your name appear? Yes, Your Honor. Polongili Babu Oweno. The ID number. That's okay. And it says that what is, is the nature of the examination required? DNA sampling. DNA sampling. And the report is to be, what is the last point? The report to be sent to stroke collected by Kilimani police. Kilimani police, the same people were investigating. Yes, Your Honor. You wish to rely upon that as part of the evidence? Yes, Your Honor. So there's the last document.